you feel like I do? Are you getting a feeling the Edge radio broadcast is growing? Well, if so, you're right. The Edge program has been hitting the bullseye of what people are interested in. Do you feel like I do? We're now broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week from the new EBN, the Edge Broadcasting Network. We've added a web store. We're making a difference in the search for truth. And we're sharing our success with you. Do you feel like I do? From around the world, people are listening. They're sending in their stories and comments. They're making guest suggestions. They're telling their friends about the show. Do you feel like I do? Listen every Saturday night, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and feel like I do, right here on this station. Political and religious news, supernatural happenings, unexplained mysteries, conspiracy theories, and special guests along with your calls, right here on The Edge Radio Broadcast with your host, Daniel Ott. Welcome back, my name is Andy Radford and you're listening to and watching the Edge UK Studios Thursday Report. Of course the UK Studio channel isn't the only channel we have here at the edgeam.com. There's Daniel Ott's main channel where he hosts a show every Saturday night at 8pm Eastern Standard Time. And we have Larry Katz's spiritual channel where he runs a show called Spiritually Speaking. This is aired on Sunday nights at 8pm Eastern Standard Time. We have a political channel, EBN Music, and coming up in the near future, the Edges Woman's Channel. All channels have now been updated with information, and there are movies and audios running there if you'd care to go to these after this show has finished. If you want to get in touch with any of our Edge correspondents, just go to the Edges homepage, and at the bottom of this, you will find the link called Correspondence. Coming up now, Edge correspondent Gina Romano talks to Deborah Hunter Pitts. This is her third interview with Gina. Deborah talks about how she was forced into pornography and raped as a child at the hands of a satanic handlers. Deborah was only three when she and her twin sister were taken away from their natural mother by the Butler County Sheriff and placed into a satanic family. Deborah talks about how she was drugged and raped repeatedly. Deborah also talks about how she was forced into pornography and how she managed to survive her ordeal. Deborah also talks about her involvement with Carlos Santana and Eric Clapton and how they joined forces to uncover the satanic agenda of America. Please note that the information discussed may be disturbing to some viewers and listeners. Here is the interview now, Deborah Hunter Pitts and Edge correspondent Gina Romano. Hi, this is Gina Romano, Edge Correspondent. Today I'm here with Deborah Hunter Pitts. Deborah was forced into a satanic family at three years old. At 17, she broke free. She met Eric Clapton and Carlos Santana and formed an organization called Militia One to help uncover mass ritual graves in Butler County, Missouri. Deborah's been a guest several times on our show, and she's back today to tell us more about how she was forced into porno as a child, uh, what rituals she was forced to watch, also how they try to split her personality and why they do that. And she also wants to touch a little bit on cults such as Manson and talk about Laurel Canyon. So she's here today to give us a lot of new information. Deborah, welcome. Thanks, Gina. Thanks for having me again. Oh, thank you. Your interviews are very popular. Um, so I just want you to know that we appreciate everything that you do because a lot of people are listening and people need to know that this is happening. This is not just in the backwoods somewhere and it's not like it just, it, oh, it can't happen to me. A lot of people think it's never going to happen to me, it's never going to happen to me, but sometimes it's happening right next door. It's right in their own backyard and they don't even know it. What I've discovered through my interviews is that this uh, crime, Satanism and organized stalking, is everywhere. And I hear from more and more victims every day. A lot of po a lot of are popping up in Illinois, and I'm so grateful to you 
for coming forward and talking about this and helping us expose this so that people are aware. So why don't we begin, um, why don't you tell us about how you were taken away from your family at three years old and at what age you were forced to do porno? Um, would the local sheriff uh, took us away from our real mother and the, best, the way I figured this out is they, they picked her as a victim because she's Jewish, as far as I know, and were going to put her in the state hospital to be one of their guinea pigs. Um, this is the way I take it. It's not what anyone just sent me down and told me, you know. And so they, they kind of got a better idea and decided to take us twins away from, from her instead of use her than use us. But she still was, uh, they still watched her forever, and she walked everywhere she went. You know, she didn't drive, and they tried to run over, and they said terrible things about her and accused her of not wanting her kids and giving them away. But we were literally took away. You know, there was no put us in a happy home and, and take care of us deal going on, you know, not back in those days, because people don't really realize what the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare is all about. It's not the propaganda that was put out there for sure, not in my case and, or anyone else in Butler County. I never even heard of anyone being removed from the home because people were cruel to them and never heard of anyone child being put with a family that treated them like they was human, you know, because it didn't happen back in them days. But at 69 is when I met Eric and Carlos, and that's because they were trapped by the same uh, satanic people that had connections with uh, Hollywood and the music industry and uh, Los Angeles County, which was big back in them days, San Fran, uh, places like that. In fact, my sister was forced into prostitution in San Francisco. I don't know where she um, well, she was in a uh, force in a prostitution from the time she's eight years old. I don't know what year they took her down there. How were Eric and Carlos trapped in the Los Angeles group? How were they trapped with the Satanism? Um, I don't know how the Satanists actually approached them and, and took over, but I know that they um, they posed as uh, limo drivers and uh, bodyguards and uh, stuff like that, you know, and it's it's like we were watched everywhere that we went. But beginning in 71, we also had foreign intelligence watching uh, famous people where they went and gathering evidence on the people that were around us, you know, the limo drivers and stuff like that. Um, and we needed that evidence. It was one thing we couldn't do for ourselves was to gather surveillance evidence on these people, or like, for example, the local sheriff department, which has been under uh, investigation since 71, and continues to be. And that's Butler County? Mm-hmm, Butler County, Missouri. It's still under investigation? Uh, well, I like to think of the investigation as being over with and this being nothing but a cover-up. I mean, they've had 24 years. We actually exposed this in 84 just, uh, just to watch the government.